Hello, in this video we're going to discuss um, three different types of variation, uh, direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. Uh, so the first thing to know about uh, direct variation is it represents a model It represents a model that can show you how one variable relates to another. The general model is y equals k times x. k is a constant. x is your input. y is your output. Um, so the way this works is if someone tells you that something um, uh, one variable varies directly with another, you know that this is going to be the model that is used. Your job is to figure out k. <coughs> um, so <clears throat> if I say, for example, um, <clears throat> a burger costs $4, um, if you uh, buy three burgers, you spend $12. This is an example of direct variation where you say, if Y is the cost in dollars, X is the number of burgers, K represents how much we change, how much Y changes every time X goes up one. In this case, Y equals four X. If you have X is the number of burgers, and Y is the number of dollars. Uh, two burgers would lead to an $8 cost. Five burgers would be a $20 cost and so forth. Ten burgers would be a $40 cost. So all, that, all direct variation means is that if X goes up, then Y goes up. If X goes down, then Y goes down. Um, it's, it's just it's very simple. Um, so Sometimes you may be asked a more generic question. Um, if, uh, the question is this, direct variation. If so, then what's the constant? So what you can do here, you've got x over y equal to five. I'm gonna multiply both sides by y and it uh, looks like we have x, y, I'm sorry, x equals 5y. Uh, I think I, I have x and y on both sides, but I guess I should divide by 5. And we get y equals x over 5, where you could say y equals 1 -fifth x. This is direct variation because you have y equal k times x. k in this case is is one-fifth. It's okay for k to be a fraction. It can be a whole number of fraction and decimal. It doesn't matter at all. So that's what direct variation is for starters. It says it's a model. If x goes up, then y goes up. If the number of burgers goes from two to five, the cost of dollars goes from eight to 20. If we buy fewer burgers, if we go from 10 down to two, we go from $40 down to, to $8. So that's what direct variation is. Um, the three types of variation that we're going to study, direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. Next is inverse variation. That is y equals k over x. x is still the input, y is still the output, k is still a constant. This time, if x goes up, then y goes down. And if x goes down, then y goes up. Um, if, uh, so there's many things that are, that are related uh, in that way. Um, if you go to the doctor more, then you probably get sick less. Um, if, you, uh, uh, if you study more, then uh, your grades probably go up and you probably have fewer bad grades. Uh, there's many things that are related. If one goes up, then something else goes down. Um, 
if your mom spends more time with your sister, then she spends less time with you, perhaps. Um, you know, anything that is related where one goes up, the other goes down, looks like this. If X gets big right here, the bottom of the fraction gets big, it makes the whole fraction smaller. Likewise, if the, if the bottom of the fraction gets smaller, if X gets smaller, the whole fraction gets bigger. Um, so for starters, um, let's just um, let's just assign uh, a number to K. Say we just have a an easy Y equals one over X. Y equals one over X. And if you look at some values for X and Y, if X is two, Y is a half. If X is ten. Y is 1 over 10, that's just 0.1 or 1 tenth. If Y is 200, if X is 200, then Y is 0.005. You can see that as X goes up, uh, Y is going down. And the arrows are confusing, but you can see the numbers are getting bigger for X and they're getting smaller for Y. Um, so uh, here's a, a, something that you might... Um, um, that you might kind of think about for a moment um, is uh, say you have y equals uh, 3 over x. Uh, that obviously fits the format of, of x here, of, of x on the bottom, y on the left, a number on the top. Suppose you had x times y equals 3. Um, you need to be able to recognize that this is also inverse variation because if you solve this for y, if you divided both sides by x, you would have that y equals 3 over x. So sometimes these will hit you kind of in, in ways that you may not be expecting. Um, so let's do a problem now um, where you solve for k. So I'm going to say x and y vary inversely. Uh, and uh, we'll say when x equals 5, y equals 20. So what you do here is you solve, uh, you, you set up your model, y equals k over x. Then you plug in 20 right here. You write down k, and then you have x is 5. And then you just solve for k. In this case, you're going to multiply both sides by 5. And you'll see these cancel out. k equals 100. So your model for this is simply y equals 100 over x. k is 100. Okay. Um, let's do another problem like this. Um, so this time I'm going to say that F is the force needed to loosen a bolt and L is the length of the wrench. And the force needed to um, loosen a bolt is inversely related to the length of the wrench. The longer the wrench, the easier it is, the less force it takes. The shorter the wrench, the harder you have to work. So let's set this up. Force is my is my outcome. Um, the length of the wrench is the is the input. So F equals K over L. That's my model. And so um, let's say if uh, 250 pounds are needed. for a six inch wrench, how many pounds for a 24 inch wrench? So that's what we're gonna figure out. First thing is to figure out K. So we know that if 250 pounds are, are put on, 250, and L is 6 inches, um, you can solve for K by multiplying by 6, and you get 1,500 
those cancel equals K. Um, and uh, by the way, if this is inches and this is pounds, uh, K is in inch pounds. Just good to know. Um, so we're going to say F equals 1,500 inch pounds over L. So now if L is 24 inches, we can say F equals 1,500 inch pounds over 24 inches. And you can divide 1,500 by 24. 62.5. So your force, the inches cancel out, and you get 62.5 pounds are needed uh, of force now for uh, this uh, bolt to be loosened. So we've done direct variation, uh, inverse variation. The last one is direct is I'm sorry joint variation. That's simply when you have your output equal to K, a constant, times X and times Y. These are two inputs. So joint variation just means you have two inputs, but it works just like direct variation. If X goes up, Z goes up. If Y goes up, Z goes up. If X goes down and Y goes up, we don't know what happens. Um, so what you have to uh, do here is just basically solve for K. And I'll tell you, um, uh, say X equals 3, Y equals 8, and Z equals 6. And uh, Z varies jointly with X and y. We're going to find the model. So z equals k x y. Oh, I'm sorry. Z is 6 equals k times 3 times y which is 8. 6 equals k times 24. Divide by 24. k equals 1 fourth. So your model here is Z equals one-fourth X times Y. That's a joint variation model. So now once you have all these three tools together, you just need to be able to take the kind of verbal given and put it into math. And when you use like inverse variation, uh, it's very common to hear something like this. Uh, y varies... inversely with the square root of x. So let's write that down. y varies inversely, so that's going to be y equals k over the square root of x. So now if I say, oh, we'll shoot, you know, shoot x equals 9 and uh, uh, y equals 15, you can solve, you can say 15 equals k over the square root of 9. So 15 equals k over 3 because the square root of 9 is 3. Multiply by 3 and k equals 45. So you would have y equals 45 over the square root of x if you solve for that, that k. Uh, y varies inversely with the square root of x. Another thing that you could hear is you could say, um, Z varies directly with the square of X and inversely with Y. So that's kind of complicated. You'd say Z equals directly with the square of X. That's going to be Y equals K times X squared. That's the square of X. But then inversely with Y means you've got Y on the bottom also. 
So that time you've got a model Z is varying directly with X squared, the square of X, but also inversely with Y as Y gets bigger, Z is getting smaller. So that would be my model here. To solve for K, you would have to be given X and Y and Z. You would plug those in and then you would solve for your K and that would be your model. You can put any of these together however you wish. Uh, maybe I'll just do uh, another one here, but it's very, um, you know, there's three tools, there's three models, there's direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. And you can put as many together as you like or just do one at a time. Um, so if I did uh, Z varies inversely with uh, the cube of y, um, and directly uh, with the uh, uh, square root again. Uh, you would say z equals k over y cubed, and then directly with the square root of x, you'd have this. So that's directly with the square root of x, inversely with, with the cube of y. Uh, so at that point, you're just now plugging in x and y and z that they give you in solving for k. And then uh, they'll say, here, let's just, let's just do that real quick. Let's say they give you x uh, equals 4, uh, y equals 2, z equals 7. So they'll say 7 equals k times the square root of 4 uh, over 2 cubed, which is 7 equals k times 2 over 8. So it's 2 over uh, 8 is 1 fourth. 7 equals 1 fourth k. Multiply by 4 and you'll see k equals 28. So my model is z equals uh, 28 root x over y cubed. And now they might ask, what is z if x equals 25 and uh, uh, y equals 2? So what you do is you go and you say z equals 28 uh, times the square root of 25 and then over 2 to the third, which is 8, and you just hammer this out. So you have 28 times 5 over 8 is z. Uh, that's going to be uh, 5 times 28 is um, 140 over 8. Um, and uh, you can just reduce that uh, down by 4, uh, so you'll have... Um, uh, let's see, uh, three, 4 goes in that 3 times 35 over 2. So that's what Z is, is 35 over 2. Um, so this is a very simple concept. There's three models, direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. And it's a matter of reading the problem, seeing what they ask. Is it the square root of X? Is it X? Is it direct? Is it inverse? Um, it's really a matter of putting things down on paper uh, that, uh, in terms of X and Y, maybe Z, um, after just reading it in a sentence.